China will be a larger economy than the United States in total. Before the end of this decade, the dollar is no longer reserve currency. I mean, you can see a lot of nations, including China, you know, Russia, India, even in the Middle East now, moving away from the dollar, trying to reorient their trade in other currencies. And I think what we've done recently with the sanctions on Russia only highlights to the world how important it is to de-dollarize. I mean, they should have done it anyway. They I mean, it's distorting the whole global economy where everybody is warehousing dollars. And the longer the dollar remains the reserve currency, the bigger our imbalances become. Sure. We have record trade deficits. You know, we are the world's biggest debtor nation with huge card account deficits. All of this is being fueled by the dollar's reserve currency status. And so the longer it remains the reserve currency, yeah. the bigger our external liabilities become and the more money the rest of the world's going to lose when we default. Did you know that the global economy is a bit like a high-stakes chess game, with nations making strategic moves to outmaneuver each other? That's exactly what China and Russia are doing. So, what's at stake? How does this affect your wallet, your future, and the very fabric of the US economy? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to After the 925. This channel is all about helping you break free from the 9 to 5 rat race and live your best life. We are here to empower you to take control of your financial future through smart investments, profitable side hustles, and money management strategies that work. So, if you're ready to say goodbye to the everyday grind and hello to financial freedom, then hit that subscribe button and join our community today. In today's video, we'll uncover how China and Russia are playing a masterful game of economic chess and how their moves are sending shockwaves through the American financial landscape. The Dollar Dilemma Now, Peter Schiff is here to spill the beans on a fascinating facet of China's financial world. You won't believe what's happening with the US dollar across the globe. China has got a massive stash of foreign currency, and guess what? A big chunk of it is in good old American greenbacks. It's like a dollar treasure trove hidden away in Chinese banks. But this creates a financial problem. When Chinese banks accept those US dollar deposits, they're bound. They can't just dish out loans like candy at a parade because they've got to keep a bunch of those dollars in the bank's vault, like a financial safety net. Now, here's where it gets juicy. This situation cranks up the demand for the US dollar in China. Banks need more of it, so they're either buying more or hugging their dollars tight. It's like a financial thriller, with dollars as the show's stars, and they're becoming rarer than a unicorn at a carnival. But Peter Schiff isn't just popping the champagne for the US dollar. He's got his detective hat on, questioning whether this dollar surge is China's attempt to put the brakes on the dollar's downhill ride. He is all about letting the market decide the dollar's fate, mainly because it's not just the yuan eyeing a piece of the dollar pie, it's other currencies too. It's like a global currency showdown, and Schiff's got a front row seat. But there's a downside to China's dollar strengthening plan. They might offer lower interest rates on US dollar deposits to make the dollar a superstar. And that could make people in China say, why bother with dollars when we can make more with yuan? It's like a money makeover show, but with currencies. Peter Schiff delves into the consequences of central bank interventions designed to prop up the US dollar. He debunks the myth that China's currency peg artificially strengthens the yuan, underscoring that the US dollar could face devaluation if China were to remove the peg. Schiff attributes China's substantial foreign exchange reserves to their efforts to prevent the US dollar's decline and artificially control their own currency's value. This points to a significant shift in China's objectives. He argues that now, China prioritizes bolstering domestic purchasing power over exports to the United States. The focus has shifted toward meeting the growing demands of their population. As China's population continues to expand, the primary goal is to enhance purchasing power thereby lowering the costs of essential goods and materials for their citizens. This is a departure from the United States, which finds itself navigating the road to self-sufficiency, having grown reliant on countries like China. Schiff points out that the US economy has transformed, evolving into a service-oriented sector where consumers often borrow money to purchase goods they didn't produce. However, this reliance heavily depends on the US dollar's status as a global reserve currency enabling the importation of goods it didn't manufacture and the ability to borrow money it didn't save. In this shifting global economic landscape, as Schiff underscores, we witness the increasing significance of self-sufficiency, domestic purchasing power, 
and a changing balance of economic priorities between China and the United States. The Inflation Puzzle You see, inflation usually happens when there's too much money chasing too few goods, a bit like everyone trying to get their hands on the last piece of the pie at a party. Now, you'd think that if the Federal Reserve cranked up the money printing machine, it would lead to higher prices and inflation. It's a logical connection. More money, more demand for goods, right? Well, not so fast. Schiff throws a curveball at this conventional wisdom. Despite the Federal Reserve going into overdrive with the printing press, the value of the US dollar hasn't dived. And here's where it gets fascinating. Schiff introduces an imaginary scenario where the United States is like a solitary island, cut off from the rest of the world. In this make-believe land, any money the Federal Reserve prints stays put, and people can only buy stuff made on the island. So, you've got more money chasing the same old limited supply of goods, and prices shoot up. It's like that pizza place with a few slices left, but suddenly, everyone's super hungry, and prices skyrocket. But Schiff talks about an escape valve. He reminds us that the United States isn't an isolated island, it's part of a global economy with trading partners. That means the money created by the Fed can be used to buy things produced outside the US, such as China. It's like your money magically teleporting to other countries, and you get cool stuff in return. This global shopping spree helps keep a lid on prices at home. With all those imported treasures, there's no rush on the local supply, so prices don't go through the roof. Schiff underlines that the global marketplace is like a safety valve, letting the Fed print heaps of money without causing a crazy price surge in the US. Now, let's talk about the Consumer Price Index, CPI. Well, Schiff zooms in on services, and guess what? Prices are on the rise. He's even got a hunch that, despite any sneaky tweaks to the CPI by the government, the cost of services has climbed higher than those official reports would lead you to believe. But here's where it gets really juicy. You'll notice a much bigger price hike when you put services and goods on separate plates and focus on the services side. Services are the local heroes of the economy. You can't quickly ship them from far off lands like you can with goods. Goods can be produced where labor's cheaper, like in China. But services? They're your local neighborhood superheroes. Schiff believes that blending goods and services in the CPI calculations can sometimes give you a lower inflation rate than in your wallet. Now, two decades ago, China was just shaking off its old communist ways. Wages were dirt cheap, rules and regulations were lax, and they weren't spending much on things like the environment or labor protection. The US saw an opportunity and outsourced a ton of production to China. That's why goods prices stayed steady, even when the Federal Reserve went wild with the money printer. Shifting trade tides don't have the ability to keep exporting our inflation. Initially, a lot of the inflation, as it worked its way into the real economy, went through financial assets. It went into the stock market, into the bond market. And now that inflation has already migrated into the real economy. It's in consumer goods, it's in services, and it's there to stay. It's just taking hold and it's gonna build on this momentum. So we're gonna have very, very high inflation for many, many years. According to Schiff, when a country runs a hefty trade deficit like the US has been doing, you'd typically expect its currency to take a bit of a nosedive. That's because trading partners end up with a mountain of US dollars, but not as many ways to spend them. The whole idea of international trade is like a grand exchange guided by comparative advantage. This is a fancy way of saying that countries make what they're good at, and trade for what others make best. It's like a giant puzzle where everyone's a winner and the prize is a higher standard of living and lower prices for all. Now, the essential goal of exporting is to pay for the stuff you import, not just to boost your exports for the heck of it. But here's where it gets interesting. The United States isn't playing by the usual rules. People have faith in the dollar, they trust the dollar, they believe in the dollar. They're gonna be disappointed. They're gonna end up losing a lot of money. Look, just like we started talking about subprime mortgages. A lot of people bought into that nonsense. They own subprime mortgages. They believed the AAA ratings. They thought they were gonna get their money back. Now, to me, it was obvious. I was talking about how these securities should have been rated F because they were gonna fail. Just, you know, look at my mortgage banker speech on YouTube from 2006. You know, this was obvious to me. Why was everybody else so clueless? Well. That's how they're all clueless now, because U.S. Treasuries, as far as I'm concerned, are subprime debt. I mean, we can't pay any more than the subprime borrower can pay. Only difference is we got a printing press. 
and we'll use it. But that just means the money is worthless when the creditors get paid. But that's the same thing as default. Countries like China send their goods to the US and get a bunch of US dollars in return. And why? Because the US dollar is like the superhero of global currencies. It's got real value and everyone's happy to take it. It's like trading your superhero trading cards for all the candy in the candy store. It's worth it. But Schiff's got a hunch that this superhero status of the US dollar might decline. He's like a fortune teller with an economic crystal ball. And he's seeing signs that the world might not be so eager to accept US dollars in the future. That's because there's a growing realization that the value of these dollars could drop faster than a roller coaster. This attitude change could have significant consequences for the US economy and trade relationships. Moreover, Schiff vividly paints the Federal Reserve's challenges in its battle against inflation. He points out that foreign investors are crucial to the US government's never-ending debt drama. These investors have been like the bankrollers of Uncle Sam's spending spree. But here's where it gets intriguing. Schiff believes that foreign investors are slowly waking up to the fact that the Fed is somewhat stuck in a tight spot. The more they realize that the Fed might keep expanding those government deficits, the less they'll want to play ball by buying US treasuries. It's like they're saying, hold on a minute, this game might not be as fair as we thought. Now, when foreign investors take a step back, the Federal Reserve will have to step in. But there's a twist. Foreign buyers use their existing dollars to snag those treasuries, which is a bit like trading your lunch money for some sweet collectible cards. But when the Fed gets involved, they don't have those dollars lying around. They must make brand new ones. It's like they're firing up the money printing machine. According to Schiff, printing money creates inflation, which weakens an economy. Unfortunately, this kind of common sense thinking never seems to penetrate academic circles. He argues that this setup allowed the US government to rack up such massive debt without facing the usual consequence of skyrocketing interest rates. It's like being able to max out your credit card without ever seeing a crazy high bill. But here's the kicker. Schiff predicts foreign investors will eventually hit the brakes on this free ride. As they become less interested in US treasuries, the Federal Reserve will be the last resort to scoop them up. And remember, these aren't just regular dollars. They're freshly printed greenbacks. This influx of new money could lead to inflation. If those newly minted dollars don't find their way out of the US and stay right there, they'll start pushing up prices everywhere. Schiff's view is a bit like a crystal ball into the future, and he's seeing rising prices for goods. This outlook doesn't precisely align with the Federal Reserve's current perspective, which may not fully consider all these moving pieces in its policy decisions. And finally, thanks for tuning in to After the 925. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on financial freedom, smart investments, and profitable side hustles. And as always, don't forget to let us know what you think. As we wrap up, are you ready to adapt to secure your financial stability in this changing landscape? Comment down below. We'd love to know.